Hey guys, my name is Funparo. In this video, I wanted to go over Dark Seal and Magi Soul Stealer. Looking at the stats of Dark Seal, the item costs 350 gold and gives you 50 AP and 40 health. In addition to these stats, there is the passive of the stacks, where you'll get 4 AP per stack with a maximum of 10 stacks. For Magi's, it will cost you 1600 gold, but will cost you 1250 gold if you've already bought Dark Seal. Magis will provide you 20 AP, 100 health, and 5 AP per stack, with a maximum of 25 stacks. So let's put all of this information into context. In order for Dark Seal to take over the AP value of an Amplifying Tone, it would take 2 stacks which is equivalent to a kill or 2 assist. In addition to the AP, there is the extra health on the item which is nice to have. So let's talk about why Dark Seal is a good item. So we can start off by talking about how it's a good comeback item. So I want you to imagine that you are playing from a deficit and as a result it's hard to obtain good gold income. This means that every purchase that you make must be worthwhile and a good investment. Due to the cheap nature of Dark Seal slash Magi's, it is a good item to get when you don't have a lot of gold. Besides its cheap nature, there is also the fact that every kill and assist that you obtain has an amplifying effect in the ability power that is gained from the stacks. This allows you to get a lot more AP passively from a cheap purchase. More AP allows you to gain access to more damage and more damage can translate you to potentially getting more opportunities for kills and assists, allowing you to kill minions faster, clear camps faster for faster respawn timers, objectives, and more due to killing them faster. All of these play an important role in overcoming a deficit and potentially turning the game around. So matches and Dark Seal is also a good item and also depends on the game state. So as I mentioned before, Buying Dark Seals slash Magi's could be a good purchase if your team is behind and it's harder to obtain gold. Buying a Magi's would mean that every fight that you obtain kills and assists and survive, it would mean more AP to do more damage to enemies and other targets. On the contrary, if you are ahead and buy Dark Seal slash Magi's, you will get more AP off every kill and assist and help snowball your lead even further. So when you're buying Dark Seal, it's important to consider that you shouldn't always base it on your champion, but also who the enemy champions are. A thing to know is that when you're buying Dark Seal and Magi's, it can give you ability power, but we need to consider the enemy team. While the enemy team itemizes a lot of magic resistance, in some cases it might be more valuable to value magic penetration from let's say a blighting jewel than to avoid death. For example, let's take a Cho'Gath who maxes his Q, and he'll do 300 plus 100% AP. If we were to do a solo item comparison between Blighting Jewel and multiple stack values of AP with Magi's, we will notice that as the stacks increase, so does the MR threshold needed for Blighting Jewel to outdamage a certain stack value of Magi's. Here is a chart that compares the stack value of Magi's and at what value of magic resistance will Blighting Jewel be a better purchase. As you can see, it varies. As the stacks increase, the MR threshold increases almost exponentially. All it takes is to look at the enemy by clicking on their character models and reviewing their magic resistance values. In a video I did previously, comparing Void Staff and Death Cap and when to buy Void over Death Cap, the trend that I noticed was that as your own AP increased, so did the MR threshold needed for Void Staff to do more. Same concept such trend can apply here. Here are the two damage equations for Blighting Jewel and Magi's to help you figure out what Magi value and MR threshold will Blighting Jewel be a better purchase. You can use these equations to check out on the chambers that you play and what requirements are needed to be met for Blighting Jewel to do more damage. I also highly recommend checking out my video on Void Sapper's Death Cap. I'll leave the link in the description. So another thing to consider in Dark Seal is that even though it's a good time to buy it based on your gold value and stuff, it might not be based on what you need to do inside of the game. So let's say that you have the gold value needed to purchase a Dark Seal, but what if damaging the enemy isn't what you need to do for your team? What if your role is to be more tankier? It might be better to buy resistances if you need to be more of a tank. What if you need to increase your attack speed? Maybe your dagger would be a better purchase. You need to think about what your role is and when playing on your team. For example, let's say that you're playing an Ivern who has Moonstone and doesn't have any AP from runes. You're deciding whether to buy a Forbidden Idol next or whether you should buy a Dark Seal. The big thing to note is that you want to create the highest value shields you can at the given time frame. It would take at least 5 stacks of Dark Seal to outpower the shield levels of a Forbidden Idol. Also remember that as an enchanter support, more AP leads to more shield strength values to protect your allies even more. The context is that you are able to purchase both at a certain time. What about just buying Dark Seal in general, so when can we buy it? So you can buy Dark Seal in the beginning of a game, but there are times when you can buy it later or upgrade into Magi's later. For example, if your team is doing Baron, Dragon, or other objectives where there's potential for the enemy team to contest, you would want to be at your highest strength. Getting a Magi's could be the choice over other items to give you the most strength. 
For example, at 8 stacks, it's worth to upgrade to a Magi's instead of purchasing a needlessly large rod. Because the AP value will be the same as needlessly large rod, but then there's the passive where if you have at least 10 stacks, you'll get 10% bonus movement speed. This means that after getting one kill or assist, you will get more value from the Magi's purchase than the needlessly large rod purchase. So another thing that you can do with Dark Souls is that you can buy the item when you die. So there are times where you may die before the enemy dies from let's say your Ignite or Leandre's Burn or something of the sort. If you don't have Dark Steel or Magi's beforehand, if you purchase the item when you die, before you achieve kill participation, you can get full stack value on Dark Steel and Magi's after you die. In addition, the raw AP that both items provide on purchase might contribute to killing an enemy or not after you die. After the enemy dies and you purchase Dark Souls or Magi's before they die, you'll get an additional AP from the stacks. Let's say that you're playing Brand and you don't have a Dark Seal. You take a trade that will end up netting you a kill, but you die before the enemy and let the burn take the kill. You're now on the death screen, and the question is what you buy. If you have at least 350 gold or even less, if you have Futures Market, when you die, you should have buy a Dark Seal. The reason being is that an Amtone will cost 435 gold and give 20 OP, while a Dark Seal will cost 350 or less and give you 23 OP and 40 health. So now considering your other options, if you buy a lost chapter with the gold you are at currently, it might be better because in order for the AP value of Dark Seal to overtake lost chapter, you would need at least 7 stacks on the Dark Seal. But then there are the other factors on lost chapter like the mana, it would take you at least 7 stacks to overpower the AP on Blasting One. You can perform the math in the game as well considering the items to get in the shop. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below what you would like to see next. I also thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.